What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this video, I'm going to be answering the two most popular questions I'm getting for the MIDI remote inside of Cubase 12. So let's get right to it. So if you don't know how to set up the MIDI remote or how you get all of these buttons, I'm going to go ahead and link the original video on the top right corner of this video. But the first question I'm going to answer is how do you save or export your MIDI scripts? So let's say you spend some time creating your MIDI map and now you want to export it so that you can use it in other projects or just make sure that it's inside the user setting script so that you can pull these scripts in any project at any time. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up where it says MIDI controller, we're gonna hit this little gear sign here. And it's gonna open up this menu, which is the MIDI remote manager. Let's say you don't wanna see a script here, so you're gonna hit this home page, go back to the gear sign. You can always disable a controller script, which will remove it from the main screen here. Now, where you do find all of your scripts, if you've made custom scripts or if Steinberg already came with some scripts pre-mapped for you is instead of the MIDI controller tab we're going to go over to the scripts tab and you're going to see that the impact LX88 is right here and it's grayed out you can also go down and see all of the other scripts that they have available but right now we're going to look at the impact LX88 why because I created it because it says here the script creator was me and then it's found in my local folder so if I actually click on it, we get a bunch of different options on the things that we can do with it. You can enable the script again, meaning it will appear in the bottom. You can delete the script by hitting this little trash can. So let's say you do not want to use the script anymore or you messed up or you're just not using the controller anymore. And here it says it only deletes the scripts located in the local folder. So there is the little icon where you can delete the script. So here you can see the name that you had chosen in the beginning. You can choose to re-edit some of the mappings that you did. So let me just go back really quick. And you can also see the script file name and it's in your local folder. And then you can also export the script. So when you export the script, it's going to have this name here. So it's going to be the name of the Nectar Impact LX88. And then the file name is JSON. Now let's say you want to import scripts. You could just click on this button on the top where it says import script. And then you would do the same process as you would uploading any file. You will find it inside of your local folder or drive and then it'll automatically import into this menu right here. So if you want this to work properly, I actually recommend that you drag this into the folder where all of the user scripts are. And let me show you where that folder is. So we're going to go into the finder right now. And then we're going to go to where it says go and then find where it says documents. When you're in documents, you're going to find Steinberg. So once you're inside the Steinberg folder, you're going to go into Cubase and then you're going to go to a folder called MIDI remote. After you go to MIDI remote, you're going to go into user settings. And then here you can see all of the user settings that you've created when you were using the MIDI remote. So look, the Nectar Impact LX is right here as a JSON file. And if you don't want this anymore, then you can actually delete it from here. But if you want to import something, I actually recommend putting it in here first. And then if it doesn't show up inside of the MIDI remote mapping setting, then you can go ahead and choose the import settings in there. I just like to put it inside of the file so that way when you open up Cubase, Cubase has already read it as it's booting up. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So that is how you delete scripts. That is how you export scripts. That is how you import scripts. And then that's also where you find the actual folder structures where all of your MIDI remote scripts lie. You can't alter any of the ones that Steinberg has created for you. So you don't necessarily have to use it. You can create a whole new set of MIDI remotes for them. So you don't have to use the presets, but the good thing is that they're already there for you. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the quick control. I've been getting a lot of questions asking me, how do you map MIDI CC to it? So after further research, the answer is you can't. You can't actually map MIDI CC one or 11 or seven or any of those onto these faders. 
what you do need to do is just remove them completely from your MIDI mapping so that whatever hardware you're using, you could do that internally inside of the hardware itself. So for example, the Nectar Impact LX88, I mapped my two first faders, which is this one right here, to MIDI CC1 and MIDI CC11. And if you want to see how I mapped it, I'm going to go ahead and link that video in the top right where I show you how to map the Nectar Impact LX to MIDI CC. We need to go where it says mapping page and then click this little piano symbol here. And then once we click on it, we go into the remote mapping assistant. You can also find this button on the top right over here. So we're going to find this one and we're going to hit this pencil symbol to re-edit our mapping. Because the problem is I have a violin patch here. So if I play the violin patch and I move these faders, you're going to see that I usually have this map to MIDI CC1 and 11. But now it's not doing anything for the violin sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the MIDI remote mapping assistant and I'm going to hit the pencil tool and I'm going to grab these two faders and I'm actually going to trash it. I'm going to delete them and now I'm going to hit next. So now every other button but those two is going to be my MIDI CC. So now when I get out and I go back into the violin sample and I play, I'm going to move the faders now. And we can see it working on this contact page. Of course, you can hear it. But look at here. I'm now moving the fader up and down on my keyboard. And it's now working. So the short answer is do not map or do not even script the two buttons that you have or two faders that you have for MIDI CC data. Just don't put it on there and put on every other button if you want. But only those two don't do it because it will override its function and you won't be able to use the MIDI CC. In the last video, we spoke about the quick control focus. And what the quick control does is it just grabs two parameters inside of the library itself and it'll place them in order from whatever parameter is being affected first. So for example, if I create an instrument and I'm gonna create another contact instrument, not a contact instrument, if I go back into and I create a Hans Zimmer instance, Hans Zimmer strings instance, you're gonna see that the quick controls are actually going to be mapped to these first two faders. So let me just pull up the Nano Control 2 and here I have it. And now this one is already one that Cubase has already laid out for me. So if I go to Quick Control 1, you're gonna see that in the Hans Zimmer library, the expression is already mapped to Quick Control 1. And if I go to 2, it's already mapped to Quick Control 2. But the only reason why it's automatically mapped into it is because these are the first two parameters that the Quick Control sees inside of this sample library. So it's actually looking into the library and it's saying that this fader is the first fader that it can control. So it's gonna quickly just assign itself to it so that it can control this fader. So if I move the pot now inside of the Nano Control 2, like I'm doing now, you're gonna see the fader of the expression move, and then you're gonna see the dynamics for the Hans Zimmer string is moving. Now, what if I move to something like the Cine samples? It's gonna automatically move and say, okay, these are the first two parameters I can affect in the quick control because that's what the first fader of the sample library has, which is the full mix volume. So if I highlight this, it says full mix. So it's going to automatically latch itself to that first one. So if I move it, now I'm controlling the full mix volume. Here I'm controlling the spot mic volume. And then if I can keep going to the right here, you're gonna see that I'm moving the close mic. Now I can move the room and then I can move surround. And then the next parameter it says I can move is the low EQ. So here's the low EQ, here's the mid EQ, so on and so forth. So quick controls just latch itself onto the first parameters it finds inside of the sample library, not necessarily MIDI CC data. It just happened to be that the Hans Zimmer strings, the first two parameters were dynamic. Of course, you can always go in and say, let's say you don't want this to control, you know, the full mix volume. So I can just go into the MIDI mapping itself. And then I could say, I want, you know, this knob to actually control. Let me open up the sidebar here. 
and say focus control, I wanted to actually control the spot mic, for example. I can apply mapping, and now this first one is going to control the spot mic instead of the full mix. But that is the function of the quick control focus. It just grabs the first parameters that you can manipulate inside of the sample library, and it'll automatically assign it to the quick control. So just to recap, if you want your MIDI CCs to work, just don't map it. Do not map it. Do not put it inside of um, your MIDI remote. Just kind of leave those out. And you can map any other fader or knobs or buttons you want except for those two. So I hope this answered your questions. If you have any additional questions, just go ahead and leave your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios website. I have a Cubase tech course that will help you learn Cubase from the ground up from a beginner user all the way up to an advanced user in just under four hours. I will soon be updating the course with all of the new features Cubase 12 has in it. So if you purchase the course today, you will get all future updates for free. I will leave the link down below in the description. And as always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you guys soon.